Good day to you. The title of our UCCD 3113 Distributed Computer System Assignment 2 is Kindergarten Smart Transient Monitoring System. We are from Group 18 and our group members are Chan Xiaojing, En Chen, Meng Huiqing, and So Yan Teng. These are the contents of our presentation. Now I will start from background study. Nowadays, the security paradigm has been changed from investigation of incidents to prevention of potential incidents. A smart surveillance monitoring system is the combination of CCTV and detection or recognition algorithms with the real-time alerts, unlike CCTV system, which can only capture, store, and distribution video while leaving the task of trick detection to human operators. The smart surveillance monitoring system, able to print incidents through real-time alarms, increase situational awareness through combined examination of location, identity, and activity of objects. The first CCTV technology is implemented in Germany by World Branch for Military in years 1942. About 10 years later, the CCTV became popular in public and home safety. From the 90s to modern times, the video cameras spread all over the country from house to restaurant to office space and even the building. The implementation of facial recognition camera enables business owners to register names with faces and get a lot when entire face come into view. Future trend. In future, the camera being used in a smart monitoring system will be with higher high resolution, and the technique in image and video processing will get improved. With the advance in machine learning and deep learning, the AI will be utilized in this aspect. The digital devices will become more powerful, contribute to less server costs, better functionality, and greater efficiency. And lastly, the rise of 5G will bring faster speed and bandwidth to the system. Problem statement. Currently, the transit of kindergarten children will lead to serious incidents such as road accidents, lost children, child abduction, and so on. And hence, the kindergarten authorities implement the CCTV system normally to reduce these cases. However, the use of traditional CCTV system has its limitations. Firstly, traditional CCTV system require a huge volume of storage to store all the videos recorded. It does not alert user when the transit is recorded. It is just for monitoring purpose. And lastly, CCTV system is labor intensive as it requires human operators to always pay visual attention to monitor on the system. Objective and proposed solution. This project is to develop a smart transit monitoring system that makes use of a sitting crowd service to monitor the transit of children from kindergarten and send notification to user once detected. The platform being used is a major web service and it can be detect the number of children and recognize the identity of children and send notification to kindergarten staff one detector and also visualize the information with smart charts and tables. Good day, sir. I am Chan Xiao Jing from Group 18. I will present about the architecture diagram of our proposed system. Our system is divided into four parts. The first part is face recognition and database. The CCTV camera installed at the kindergarten front gate will be connected to an S3 bucket to store capture images. A lambda function will pass the newly captured images into Amazon recognition to detect the presence of children and also the number of detected children. Another S3 bucket is created to serve as a whitelist to compare between the face of assisting kindergarten students and the face of detected children. The result of the positive detection is stored inside DynamoDB through a lambda function. The second part is Theta Dashboard. The results stored in DynamoDB can be visualized using Amazon QuickSight to conduct student currency analysis. To create graph visualization, Amazon Athena is used to query data from the DynamoDB and store the query result inside a S3 spill bucket. Then, Amazon QuickSight is configured to connect to Athena Data Source Connector to visualize the data based on the query result. The third part is user authentication and API gateway configuration. To view the dashboard, the kindergarten teachers and staff need to sign into their account through the hosted UI by Amazon Cognito. Once the user is authenticated successfully, the OpenID Connect token generated for the user and the encoded URL will be sent to the Amazon API gateway. The API gateway will verify the ID token and authorize the API call. Then, a sign-in token will be obtained and redirect the user to the QuickSight dashboard. The fourth part is instant alert notification. When a child or some children are detected, the system will send alert emails to the electronic devices of kindergarten staff and teachers through Amazon SNS. A Lambda function will retrieve email address from users who have logged into the system to enable topic subscription so that they can receive instant alert notification. Hi, I'm Soining and I will discuss the three famous IoT Cloud platform in this section. First of all, Microsoft Azure IoT Suite is the second largest provider which offers a variety of the Microsoft service and has a software integration for building the IoT solution. 
from that, it has a broad future set and use a hybrid hard approach. However, the Microsoft Azure consists of the documentation issue and the management tooling is not comprehensive. Secondly, the Google Cloud IoT platform offers an end-to-end -end platform that's easier to the user in managing the IoT data. Talking about the cost of the platform, the Google Cloud provides the deep discounts and flexible contracts that may consider as reasonable price for a user, which is more suitable for cloud native organization. Nevertheless, the Google Cloud is lacking of the future and the service as compared to other platforms. Lastly, the service offered by the AWS are much more mature as compared to others. It is the market dominance and provides the large scale support and compact training. Most importantly, it can be reached globally. On the other hand, some claim that the AWS platform is hard, is hard to use and, as, and expensive to manage. Furthermore, it is overwhelming option require the user to have a more deep understanding to select the correct and suitable service. In our proposed system, the AWS is our chosen platform. All in all, in future, a real-time detection system is an added value to be implemented because in our purpose system, the captured images are being used to detect the children leaving the kindergarten. This approach may not effectively detect the motion of the children, thus the video is suggested to have that in the future system. Furthermore, due to the future limitation of the Amazon recognition, this is only one feature that is suitable for the purpose system, which is the face recognition. If the capability of the service enhanced in the future, aspects such as the height of the children are suggested to be analyzed so that the accuracy of the outcome could be higher. For instance, the system can filter up the non-related objects such as the passerby based on the characteristic and alert the admin only if the true object is detected. Hence, it could reduce the usage of the storage rather than require the capacity to store the irrelevant data into the database. Lastly, IoT feature can be implemented in the future system. Multiple cameras can be implemented into the environment and collect the data from different locations, for example, the different floors of the kindergarten. Nevertheless, the proposed system is expected to enhance the traditional monitoring system of the kindergarten. That's all for my group. Thank you. Now, I will demo the part one face recognition and database. In our proposed system, there are two buckets created in the system. One of the buckets is called the kindergarten upload. It's used to upload the face image of the children for recognition. Another bucket is called the wireless bar, is to, is which contain all the image picture of the children. For now, I will try to upload a children called Harry in this bucket, this wireless bucket. So after that upload, the Harry is inside the wireless bucket. And now I will demo on how we upload the children image. And in this section, I will upload a similarity face for the Harry, which is the Harry tool, to see the similarity which it, the children is detected or not. So in this cloud watch, we can check that the children, the image of the children is successful uploaded. And we can check for the Dynamo DB, and we can see that the the children is uploaded in this part, which that the similarity is 99.55%. Yeah, the children is detected. In this part, I, I said that if the children, if the, if the similarity is over the 80%, the children is set to, is the children detected is set to one. Otherwise, it, the children detected is set, set to zero. And now I will try to upload an image, which is not in, in the wireless packet. So the children Hermione is not in the wireless packet. And now I will try to see that is it is, detected or not. So refresh the DynamoDB. Yeah, you can see that the, the Hermione only have 0.79% similarity, which the children is not detected in this case. So of course, um, in, in reality, of course, it is not a good choice to store all the person detected. For sure to store the children is only if there is detected. So in this case, because we just want to store, to store the information, which if how if the children is not invited, at least bucket detected how they will be cropped. So if the children is not detected, the face ID also will be no store in the database. Only if the children detected the face ID will store in the database. So first, we can see that we will list all the existing collection. If not collection, we will call create a wireless bucket in this in S3. And we will add the face into the collection called the wireless. And we will compare and choose the bucket with the wireless collection. So after we compare, we can, if the similarity of the detector is over 80%, the children is detected. Otherwise, the children is not detected. Also, in this case, we're using the threshold, which is zero, because this threshold is something sim like the similarity. If I set to 80%, the recognition it only works if the similarity is 80%. So it's on this database, DynamoDB, only will store the 80% similarity of the image. Otherwise, we will not. Like, in this case, I, I on. I will store zero. I, I will set to threshold zero because I also want to see how if the image is detected to be zero percent. So we can see that if zero percent, the face ID is not detected and the children is set to be zero. Yeah, that's all for my part. Thank you. Demonstration part two: data dashboard. This is the final dashboard that we have done. 
the analysis is around the date of detection, number of children detected, and the number of fast ID detected. The dashboard is a real-time one. That means any change in the data will refer directly to the dashboard. For example, if we go to the S3 management console, the S3 bucket, if we upload a new images today, okay, upload succeed. Then we go back to the uh, dashboard. Then we can see that the data has been changed. That's all for the quick side dashboard part. Now I will demonstrate about user authentication and API gateway configuration. Firstly, we create a user pool. Allow user to sign in with their username and uncheck this enable case insensitivity for username input because usernames are case sensitive in QuickSight. And only allow administrators to create users so that not everyone can simply just create an account on this system. Then we choose email only for account recovery and ownership verification. Next, we create an app client and enable all the off flows. Then, we enable Cognito user pool as identity provider and put a temporary address for callback and sign out URLs. For allow off flows, select implicit grant and for allow off scopes, select open ID and profile. Then, we add a Cognito domain name. Next, we have created a user to enable log into the system using their username and password. We have also created a Lambda function that makes API gateway calls to get the dashboard list and session embed URLs. Before creating the function, we have created its related policy and role. The calls were obtained from QuickSight Workshop documentation website. We increased the function time out to 30 seconds and also configure the environment variables such as data path, cognito client ID, cognito domain URL, dashboard region, and row ARN. Next, we have configured an API gateway to invoke the Lambda function created just now. This is a REST API with a GET method used to get the dashboard list through the Lambda function. After deploying the API, we will get this invoke URL. This invoke URL needs to be embedded at QuickSight domain so that when user logs in, the API gateway will redirect them to the dashboard. This URL also need to be inserted as callback and sign out URL with the resource name appended behind it. Finally, we can launch the hosted UI by entering the callback URL, sign in with the username and password created earlier, and then log into the dashboard. This is the invoke URL of the gateway and appended with the method name. By selecting a dashboard name children detected face ID detected, user can view the real-time and interactive dashboard. The data dashboard shows a real-time visualization based on the children detection results stored in DynamoDB. User can also click on the embedded session view and select dashboards at the side panel to view the dashboard published by the owner. That's all for my presentation. Now I will pass to Hui Chin for instant alert notification demonstration. Good day, sir. I'm Eng Hui Chin, student ID 1802518. I will continue the presentation with part 4, Instant Alert Notification, which are this part in the architecture diagram. The main service used in this part is Amazon Simple Notification Service, or called SNS for short, and either with AWS Lambda and Amazon Cognito. The implementation of the Instant Alert Notification can be summarized in four steps briefly. Firstly, task 1, create a topic in Amazon SNS. Nothing special, two things to note is that we should select the standard type of topic so that we can use SMS and email as the subscription protocols. And remember to copy the topic ARN for later use in task 2 and task 3. Task 2, create a new Lambda function to perform subscription for newly signed up Cognito user. Nothing special too, the only main point is to attach the Amazon SNS full access policies to the execution role of that Lambda function so that it has permission to subscribe to an SNS topic. The code is written in Python. What it will be done is basically, first, accept a pre-sign up event when a Cognito user sign up. The user information including the email address will be retrieved. The email address will then be passed to the subscribe topic function and perform subscription. Remember to paste the topic ARN that we had copied in task 1. Of course, the ideal way will be to use the phone number as the endpoint protocol and send an SMS alert notification. However, since the SMS protocol has a lot of restriction and needs to pay for usage, so we chose to use email instead in this demo. Next, task 3. Modify recognition lambda function created in part 1 to publish measures for the SNS topic that I created just now. Step 1. Create a new function called send notification in the previously created recognition lambda function. In the function, remember to, to paste the topic RRN copy in task 1. 
This function will publish message for the kindergarten children see uploaded as the next topic. Then call the send notification function in the main handler. In our case, if a child free with a similarity of more than 80% was detected, it will call this function and send an RL email to the subscribe user. And here we attach the Amazon SNS full access policy to the execution role of this function too. Task 4. Modify Cognito user pool created in previous part to trigger the Lambda function. Just select the Lambda function we created in Task 2 under the pre-sign up event. This means the function will be triggered when a new user sign up. Lastly, user site simulation. In conclusion, after a new user account was being created, the subscription lander will be triggered. The email of that user will be automatically subscribed to the kindergarten truancy area as an S topic. When a child truancy case is detected, the recognition lander will publish a message to the subscribe user. I will show it live for you to see more clearly. Firstly, as an admin, I will create a new user in the user pool. I can check the subscription status from time to time. You can see that a new subscription was created in pending status. It will turn to confirm state after the user click confirm in their email inbox. So, as a kindergarten teacher or staff, I only need to check my inbox and confirm the subscription. And lastly, once the system detects a child truancy case, I will receive an alert email. That's all of our group presentation. Thank you.